Good evening. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you for everything you do for the world. Going back to the quote, and I do not mean to correct Thomas at all, mm. but there is a question. Yeah. Is it an arising or is it a recognition that occurs? And perhaps I'm just confused about the terms. Is it a rising? Or is or it a recognition of, of the self that is, cannot be known? Mm. Oh, I would say, I mean, knowing, knowing, well, number one, knowing my experience and also knowing his work, mm -hmm. I would think he would talk about it as a recognition okay. of something. Something that's, oh, of course, we're, language is tough here, right? Because it's a, it's a something that's not a something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it, it, the, the experientially, I'm not talking metaphysically. Personally, I kind of try to stay away from metaphysics. Mm -hmm. um, I try to just stick with the direct experience of being. Mm -hmm. That it, it, it seems as though, it feels as though, the experience seems as though it's something that has that is, has always been, right? It doesn't seem like, oh, it's just a, n a new arising moment or experience. It's, yeah. it's like, wow, it seems to be something kind of like that which seems to give birth to all the arisings. Yes, and so that which gives all arisings and, and when the arisings are cast aside, that has always been, and it's... Um, at least I feel it's just a recognition of what has always been. Yes. There's nothing really to arise there. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a great way to put it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a great, great clarifying question. Come on up in, at the back. Yeah. Yeah, because if it was just another, you know, momentary arising, then why, why would one make any kind of a big deal out of that? You know, because it would just be another arising that disappears. So, fortunately, it's, it's not just that. Good evening. Hey. Um, I know we were told not to have a backstory for our question, just kind of keep it short. Sure. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already starting. <laughs> It's programmed into the <laughs> system. If you if you mention the story, the backstory, the whole thing is closed. No, I'm I'm. Oh, cool. um, so yeah, just cut me off if I'm taking too long. Go right ahead. So um, I have actually have a really interesting story about you that happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a vipassana, and I left early, which is like the biggest no-no ever. You're not supposed to leave. After Are you went to a vipassana retreat? Yeah, I guess uh, a Goenka one, mm -hmm. a ten-day one. Mm -hmm. And um, came this realization on day six, and it got a little too, uh, started very open-minded, and my experience, I'm not trying to taint it for anyone else, but it got very, uh, I guess, Buddhist um, lore, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left, and uh, I drove back, who was in Washington, drive back all the way home, I get home, my roommate has your book, Emptiness Dancing, sitting out on my bed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is kind of crazy. Um, so I started reading it, and uh, the, first, the first chapter had something in it that after I read it, I couldn't read anymore because I had to know the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. So here's the question. Um, is it okay if I quote you for... Uh, sure. I'm not, I'm, not trying to sound like, I'm not trying to sound like a White House reporter or anything. I'm just trying to... <laughs> uh, Go at it. So... So as I said, the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can everyone hear me in the back? Yeah, when okay. you're right up on it. I was trying not to do that thing again. And I know. Okay. So the thing that um, in the Vipassana retreat is all about, um, you know, you kind of, they get to this thing where you understand your moment to moment is changing mm -hmm. and it's just change, change. And you get to the core of that. And I thought that was amazing. I was like, yeah, everything's changing, change. Yeah. And then it got to, uh, the day I was on, it got to uh, reincarnation and stuff like that. And yeah. for me, that was like, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this moment to moment change. And for me, I was like, that's all there is going to be. It just keeps going on and on. And it's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
you described in your in your book emptiness dancing that you were getting up early you were excited every morning at 4 a.m it was freezing cold but you were like the most hardcore meditator you just kept pushing it and pushing it and then you said one morning you had this like epiphany and you woke up and you took a step and then here's what you said all in the step of a foot everything disappeared what arose was an image of what seemed like an infinite number of past incarnations as if heads were lined up one behind another as far back as I could see. Awareness realized something like, my God, I've been identified with various forms for umpteen lifetimes. At that moment, consciousness spirit realized it had been so identified with all these forms that it really thought it was a form right up to this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I read that and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, push me. Um, the pen like that mic is something you really, really like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read that and I said, the Buddhist tale, and no disrespect with that, is that he saw all of his past lifetimes. Yeah. And then this was like the moment of enlightenment. He saw his past lifetimes, then he was able to escape the wheel of life and yeah. then move on. Is yeah. that what you experienced? That's the myth. Huh? Is that, what you, is that what you're saying here? Not exactly. I'm not even claiming that the past lives are actually real. What are you saying I'm here? just... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean that to sound rude. I'm no, just saying no, that, like... No, no, no. It's a great question. Th th this is, this is a like... a great question. I'm saying this, this is what I experienced. This is what I experienced and at other points, maybe not in that one section, but really what was more important to me is what I got out of it, right? What, what, what seemed to be, what was important wasn't having these sort of downloaded, you know, scenes and images and events, you know, that seemed to be as real as this one in and seemed to be at some distant point in the past. What's, what was really important was in every one of those, they were sort of an embodiment of some sort of primal confusion. And from the vantage point I was at, I could spot the primal confusion immediately. You know, like you can, when you have 20-20 hindsight, things are a lot clearer. So I could see it immediately, and then I could I kind of release it, I could feel it release in my body. Now, here's one of the insights that I had with, during that time when all this was occurring, and they, they happened for on and off for months, was part of one of the insights was that all of these so-called past life experiences are actually being created in present time. Wow, that's <laughs> it's all present. So even past is actually present. Okay. So I, if I, you I, ask uh, me, Adya, do you, do you have a belief, a metaphysical certainty in past lives? I would say, no. This is what I experienced. But for me, meta metaphysical certainty is like an extraordinarily high bar. And it's not like, to me, that bar isn't like I'm 99% or 98% convinced. It takes, it takes more than that. So I'm not, I'm not at, I'm, I would not claim that, it had, that I'm talking about something of metaphysical certainty that there is this thing called past lives and they're actually in the past. I, but, but there was something that was experienced and they sure came in handy because they seemed to have, either they seemed to be uh, affecting current life experience or they, were, or they were representations of current life experience. Either way, there was, some, there was something that I needed to see about each one of them. That's, that was the important part to me. I, What's the important part to you? Well, I, I guess... I don't know why my mind's sticking to this. Um, that morning, was there a specific thing that you remember that, like, maybe you did this during meditation or that? And I know it's not the whole thing of a lot of the people come up here is, you know, there's no one right path, but... Yeah. Oh, was you, there... you do not want to go my path. <laughs> <laughs> you you might actually mine. already be on it, but, you know... It... <laughs> We both, we both have shaved no, heads. I know. No, but I mean, I can't remember if that happened a day or a week or it was in a short period of time after a big opening that I had. That, um, and part of that, oh, it, was, it, was an, it was a spiritual opening that was started out being extraordinarily, actually very violent. 
energetically violent, like being ripped out of the whole identification with anything. And so that's why I say you don't really want to go, <laughs> you know, ripping yourself away from anything isn't pleasant. Once you're ripped away, it feels pretty darn good, but I wouldn't suggest it as a coherent spiritual path. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the best things come, the best things actually come, you know, insight tends to come through two different ways, right? Either when you are, and this is a, this isn't true in all cases, right? But it's a, it tends to, tends to go in a, in, a, in a state where you are truly and deeply just relaxed and spontaneously being, where you have no intention of trying to make anything happen. That's a very conducive mental state. The other, the other one is if you're like I was, when I, especially when I, when I was young, just had a sort of blood-dripping desire for enlightenment and drove myself so hard, I was wondering what's going either I'm going to break through into something better or I'm going to end up in a padded cell. That's how hard I pushed myself. And if you push yourself that hard, you can just have a whole, the whole system kind of crashes. And if it crashes just right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you kind of see beyond the whole system. If it doesn't crash just right, you can you can be you know, and you can be in a more difficult situation than you started. <laughs> so that's why I suggest something that looks as more like the former. You know, as more um, an embodiment of ease as is possible, knowing that that's not always possible. Thank you. Trust your, what I'm really trying to say is trust yourself. Right. Each of us has our own unique way of going through all this and there just isn't a, you know, the way that I teach is a combination of meditation and inquiry. So it's like, let go, know, know when to let go and get the feeling of letting go and, and just being and have, make your your inquiry, like you're asking me a question right now, right? That's a kind of inquiry. And get your inquiry very, very specific and pointed and totally focused. The combination of, of like really soft and really letting go, but also a sort of discipline, I'm going to get as clear as I can possibly get I'm going to get clear on what my confusion is and I'm going to look and utilize my, my innate intelligence to start to look at what's real or not real, true or false. And you, you, that becomes a discipline. I have found that these two approaches combined are generally more effective and powerful than either one left on their own. But, you know... Having said that, you just... But I'm interested in what's underneath your question. Because I have a feeling there's something going on with, that's beyond a mere curiosity about past lives and whether there are, the, whether they, there are past lives or there aren't and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm wondering where the question came from for you. Um, and you don't have to say if you don't want, that's optional too. Yeah.
that's right. That's what I felt. There's something in you that's, that this is, it's very, very important to something in you. I got uh, I got really sick in the military. Mm -hmm. You want to chat about it at the end? I'm yeah, happy to yeah, I've been taking up your time. Okay, at the end of the night, when I leave, yeah. just please follow me, okay? We'll if find you don't a mind, plastic yeah. Shape. Yeah, okay. I know, it's, it's, not everything is meant or easy to do in front of a big group of people, so, but <laughs> if, you well, want, if you want to, if you're so inclined, just It's like the hard part's out. over now. But what's, <laughs> what's that? I said, I feel like the hard part's over now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I want to give people more time. Okay, okay. But follow thank you. me out, though. You bet. Yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that goes, oh, thank you. Sir. It's another really important thing that I found that, you know, whatever somebody's question that they might ask me or ask themselves, it, it, every question has a history to it, right? It has its own story. But I, by the way, by saying story, I don't mean it's simply discounted. I just mean every question has its own story, has its context, context has its lived life experience which is giving that question shape and meaning and significance for that person and being intimately connected with that is more important even than the question. The question is just sort of a way of articulating what's coming out of that place. But, so the place that our questions come from is, is really the most powerful thing we have going. Yeah.